We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Um, welcome everybody to Kim's Universe. We are back on another topic, um, cultural disconnects. I'm inviting John White in and Twyla Prendo. Introduce yourselves one by one. And Ricky, our producer, thank God for all of us. Hello, hello, I am Twyla Prendo. I am the founder of Cash Kids, where we teach your K through 12 students how to master money skills early so they can lead a struggle-free life. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, my name is John White. I own a channel on the Lit TV network called Love and Legacy, the Love and Legacy channel. We're going to be talking about Gullah Geechee, and we're going to be talking about love and legacy in our community and around the world. But yes, the actual channel on the Lit TV network. My name is Ricky Bernard Smith. I am producer, graphic designer, videography, and all around clown. <laughs> all right. Way. Wonderful. Congratulations to John, to Twyla, and to the clown. We love <laughs> you all. Um, we just celebrate all of us. And now we're going to get into um, cultural disconnection. And to start off, the, we, we want to look at and address some of the issues. The trauma and disruption caused by slavery severed African Americans from their cultural heritage, language, and ancestral connections. With all of this being said, there was a loss of cultural identity and disconnection from ancestral roots. And roots, this can contribute to a sense of feeling lost or disconnected from our own history and identity. And we want to look at the business support, the business support, uh, John and Twyla. Uh, and Ricky, uh, so many questions, and you know, I might be the one that they actually come and shoot because I'm like, dude, bad attitudes. All right, who gonna start? I'll start. Yeah. All right. I'll start. Uh, you know, the, the the thing the thing I hear a lot uh, when I hear the cultural disconnect, I hear. Uh, it being you know, connected to slavery 400 and some years ago. Uh, I've been hearing more and more about how the trauma of slavery was not addressed uh, right after slavery. And it has been continually just, you know, postponed, not addressed. Uh, the separation of our families was not addressed right after slavery. Uh, the Fort Acres and they could have kept the mule was not addressed right after slavery. There's a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things that happened during slavery that have not been addressed. And 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 I think it's to the bit and right after even right after uh desegregation, uh the Jim Crow came out and uh, and that allowed us not to address uh right coming right out of slavery, and then the Freedmen's Bank came out and we were, we, you know, we were saving money, the pennies and whatnot, but then they robbed the bank. Uh, I mean, so it, it's, it's just so many un, unaddressed uh, things that we've had to deal with. But even doing all of that, we feel some bad mama jammas, as my mom would say. Uh, so I just, I, just, I just want us to understand who cares about that. Let's address these doggone things. And, and one of the things that we control is our pocketbook. You know, so I, I right. was walking today, uh, and at the end of my five miles, I said, why don't everybody listen to me spend $5 with a black business? How about we do that? Anyway, don't get me to preaching up in here. <laughs> well, I can say, um, and I said it on a, maybe on another um, show with Miss Kim, that you inspired me to do a little bit more because I consider myself a supporter of black business. And when you put the challenge out to spend, you know, a certain amount every week, it made me realize like I wasn't spending as much money as I thought I was. So now, you know, I have a designated amount and I'm act actively searching out um, businesses to support. So, and I just make sure that I do that. But I think, you know, sometimes we do need 
someone to give a charge or lead the way because a lot of times we think we're doing some things that we're actually not doing it to our greatest potential, if you want to say. And I can agree with that. Um, same thing uh, yeah, to piggyback off of uh, Twyla with, with John. Um, when I were doing it, when I was doing your show, you had a guest on there and, and um, they were talking about black businesses. And what it caused me to do is m my wife and I, we, we travel a lot. So what we wasn't doing when we traveled was intentionally looking for black businesses out of out of out of the city or out of the state. So what we started doing, and this has been like several months, is there you go, Dr. Alkaline. <laughs> so what what we've been doing, matter of fact, I need some of that water as well. I need to get with you. But um, we have been intentionally looking for black businesses to to support at um. It, it, it's just now now it's more intentional where where i didn't even think about it, it didn't even come to my mind it's like a goal of mine hey okay we're going here we're going there uh let's look up some black businesses that we can go to matter of fact we just went to uh, i want to say we went to fort lauderdale and there was this restaurant called aunt betty's wonderful restaurant black owned good food and the, the big thing with me and um this is kind of this i guess this could kind of segue into the next the next topic but the big thing with me is i don't care how good your food is i don't care how good the product is if the customer service is trash you don't you will not have my money and i think that that needs to be addressed within our community to make sure that we don't have that sense of entitlement that just because i'm a black business you have to support me you know we need to make sure that we're we're giving competitive prices or even even i can deal with the prices it's the customer service that that will kind of push me away. And then um, how I will, I'll feel some kind of way because you'll have people that say, well, uh, yeah, but these people over here don't treat you right, but you still give your money to them. Now, in my opinion, that's my money. So I don't, I don't take too kind of people telling me what to do with my money. You know, I feel like you bring your customer service up. I don't mind supporting you. If you have bad customer service, I mean, if you have, you can have a bad product, but good customer service, you'll have me around here eating mold, telling people to come to your restaurant, all because you got good customer service. So I think that uh, black businesses, we need to be aware of the customer service that we're given and the product that we're putting out. Yeah, I agree. Um, I had a experience this weekend um, and it, it made me think about the conversation that we had before of how... Um, you become your environment, your product of your environment, and the business etiquette is missing for a lot of people. You say, okay, well, I'm just going to start a business. So like, you know, so that means I'm starting a business from my place of where I am right now, who I am, what is my consciousness? That's, that is my business that's coming out. So I think, you know, it's with some groups of people who, maybe a little um i'm gonna just say ignorant um anyway you know so that is coming across in your business because there's no one there training you there's no one there um you know showing you the way to go it's just you had this idea to start a business you may be good at something and then you start doing it but you know when you have people as you've mentioned before ricky that you know maybe you're not on time or you say you open at nine but you don't get there until 12. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I had to take my child to school, you know, with the excuses, not really understanding that, hey, you know, this is business and this is serious. So, but to your point, you do have some people that are like, oh, well, you should support me because I'm a black business. Or they'll be the same ones to quick to say, oh, as soon as a black business make a mistake, then you have an issue. But like, you know, even over the weekend, you know, the young lady who had been paid for decorations, was super late like this is a party so you know why aren't you here but you have these excuses and the attitude about like how the customers have no understanding of you're late for a party that you've been paid for it's just like the whole disconnect as we say like hey you don't see anything wrong with that and i say okay well that person that's a pro she's a product of her environment you know and so it hasn't been taught to her or, you know, it's, it's, they have do things in, in their everyday life. So then it spills over into your business because who does that? I mean, you can, you can say, 
people say, oh, well, you don't do that to Walmart or blah, blah, blah. But yeah, Walmart is open when they say they're open. Walmart, um, if, if I have an issue, there's someone I can go to. Um, Home Depot, if they say they're coming out between a, a certain time, they're coming out. Same with the cable people. We may not like it, but they give us a window. They don't come and say, oh, sorry, we outside this window. You know, I had to go feed my dog. They don't do that. Well, see, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad y'all have those experience with with, because I had the opposite experience with them other folk. You know, you know, you know. I don't, I don't appreciate women uh, uh, going into these nail salons and these people be talking whatever they talking and laughing at you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't appreciate the fact that when I go in there, there ain't nobody look like me, but the people getting their toes and nails done. I don't appreciate not looking around my neighborhood and none of them around. I don't appreciate them turning them dollars over that I'm turning over in their, their little nail salon in my community. I don't appreciate the fact that I don't see them uh, in, in the restaurant set up that I'm, I'm going to, but I see a line of us uh, trying to get that, that, uh, get that Chinese food. I don't appreciate the fact that uh, I don't like, I just don't like how they, how they, the customer service are like thereof. But see, but 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 and I love them black restaurants like the one on Pearl Street. They come in there and I open the door and uh, one fast lady talking about, welcome to one fast lady. Thank you for giving me that. I mean, right. and, and I've gotten to the point now where I mimic her when I walk in the door because I know she gonna say it. She's she doesn't even know she just heard the door, you know what I mean? Right. I, I, I went to uh Celestine. They got them fried lobsters and them, them uh, 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 I mean, they, man, come on, man. So that's that's been my experience now. Now, and I don't mind telling the folks uh, 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 that I do business with that don't look like me that if they when they ain't doing something, nothing, I'm trying to get some of my money back. I'm trying to let them understand. Do you do everybody like that? Because this show feels like disparate treatment. You know, like I told y'all before, my son said I got a PhD in white guilt. You know, I don't mind putting it out there. I don't care who listened to who heard who here, because the bottom line is that it's me and come get some. Cause I got something for you to get, dog. Cause I love me some black folk. And, and I'm not saying none of y'all don't love black folk. I'm just saying I'm rooting for everything black. <laughs> I'm rooting. I'm rooting. I'm rooting for everyone as well. But one of the things that I hear from you is you're supporting our people, and that's wonderful. But the trauma in black businesses is mm -hmm. one of the issues. Mm -hmm. The trauma of how they treat people, everyone that you guys brought up is like one of a, one in a million. Um, I was telling Ricky earlier that when I started my hair salons in Jacksonville in Argyle over 20 years ago, and that was pr pr predominantly um, others, it, it wasn't hardly any of us out there. Um, my attitude was to please um, the community, which meant that I had to know how to be service to them, right? And that meant that I could capture their money. And from that point of view, we're looking at us. Now, the cultural disconnect that I feel is happening is like Twyla said, the grooming and the orientation of business, understanding that you may have a gift, but your gift needs to be applied effectively in order for you to stay in business. The other thing is, is that there's many of us because of the trauma and financial issues that will not go and get a business license. Some that operate are not business license owned. And those are the areas that need to be addressed because the disconnect is not just that there's someone in this in in Detroit. I love her food. My the, everyone in the community does. When I was there in November, uh, my mother had talked to her about me, and I coached her on how to get into um, her own business, the building all of the documents that needed to be set in order. These areas need to be addressed and also customer service. Back to you guys. Well, well I, you know, I, 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 I like that. It, I'm sorry. 
No, I just wanted to add on to um, what John, well, both of you saying really, but more specifically, John, because we're in the same community. Um, when you're talking about um, Celestials and you're talking about One Fox or Lady Cafe, look at who the owners are. Their business is a reflection of them. So when they went into business, they already had a spirit of excellence about them because they knew what they were going to do. They already had the background. So you that so now it's reflected in their business. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, some people don't have that training or that background. And so they're taking who they are into their business and it's not acceptable. And then they don't even realize and see that is not acceptable. Well, you know, Tawala, just what you said, when you talk about uh, you, you pay for the service and they don't come on time. And then when they come late, they don't see a problem, man. You, you, you better than me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause, but, but, you know, I think part of that is some people need coaching, but they don't think they need coaching. You know what I mean? Some people need some kind of a mentor because maybe the mentor or the coach has overcome some of that trauma that's built up over the years through education, through uh, the school of hard knocks. And a lot of times people don't want to accept that because somehow they think it makes them feel less than to get some coaching, which is crazy. If excellence is what you're, what you're seeking, then if you can't get to the level that you need to be at, first of all, you need to understand there's a level you need to be at. And, 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 I, and, I, and that goes to that trauma of, I'm not listening to nobody. Forget, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't want them to know that I don't know how to do whatever. So I'm going to tough it out. Well, you know, that doesn't make sense, especially if, if you're spending your money. Find somebody that's, 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 that'll coach you and listen. But, but the trauma over the ser years and decades and centuries has made some of us not accept that, which is crazy. Right, but then you can't get coached if you don't know that you need to be coached. And yeah. I'm just using myself as example. In my journey in business, um, there's an organization that I joined that I get like you know um, coaching from every month, and some things were brought to me that I had no clue about. Like there's no way I would have known this had they not brought some things to my attention. So sometimes we're out here operating and we think you know we are excellent but we're excellent to our standard of what we know and sometimes if, if no one's there to um tell you or some or no one's there that you can receive the um the um correction from then why would i go get coaching if i think i'm all this and then you know somebody who has a talent like shoot everybody like my stuff why i need to be coaching i'm making mm -hmm. money over here i'm good look how good look how good my stuff is you know so so who does the lack so, of personal I, I accountability agree. fall on? Is it is it our culture or should it should a light turn on on the individual? Um, I think, now, go ahead. Go ahead. I feel like sometimes a light won't come on until you hit um, a period of breakdown. And um I talk about this and I did some posts in the last week on familiar and unfamiliar. Um, when you are walking into an unfamiliar season, that's your um, prime time where the light is on you to create and to become relevant and excellent. It's not the time for you to keep creating the same thing, which means that you're in a transformation. Um, back to what John said about um, going into nail salons, <laughs> the reason why they have so many nail salons is because they work together. Um, they cultivate within themselves. You know, I coach a lot of people that will miss the mark on mentioning me in circumstances that I coach them on. You know, thank looking at Terry and how she just listened to my mother and said, I want to talk to you about my business. Okay, moving forward, I have three people here that I put out in the community concerning themselves. I don't have you all here just because to the audience, I have you here because in my eyesight, you're experts on what you do. 
You understand? And once we promote that with each other and continue to promote it, it becomes solid. The, the thing is, in between the three uh, of the four of us, we begin to cr critique each other, you know, on what is, is right and what is wrong. What do I need to do to propel this business? It's not just always one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's also right here in this spectrum that we are looking at each other and saying, could you do this and can you do that? Um, individuals that I talk to weekly about business. Did I make a mistake? There's no mistakes in the universe. There's only the ability to exercise unfamiliar territory. And a lot of people don't understand that everything that we do, every, when we get up in the morning, we have the opportunity to do something different in business, but sometimes we're afraid. If you reach out to groups, as Twyla says, she's in a group and they're coaching her. Um, they can accentuate what you're not doing. Your ego can't get in the way. That's trauma. The ego is sitting there pushing back with the wall that's saying, I know everything. Become, uh, uh, get released from I know. And mm -hmm. I take on the idea of I'm learning. I, mm -hmm. I hope that that comes across because in most cases, the reason why we are not successful, like John said, is because I know everything. If I'm not teachable, then there's no way that I can walk into another door of opportunity. Well, I'll tell you one thing. At the end of the day, I would love to see everybody spending $25 a week to start, $50 a week uh three months from now uh and get to a hundred dollars a week uh at, at or any multiple of that five dollars two dollars a dollar i just i just want folks to intentionally understand that what's happening now is we've been conditioned to give our money outside of our community and we've been conditioned to be okay with the other communities keeping the money in their community. We have, we, it's like, we got to, it's like, I, we see it, but we don't say anything about it because we got that condition that that's the way, that's the way it's supposed to be. They are supposed to be keeping all their money over there. We are supposed to be giving all of our money over there. And then we wonder about why our schools are like our, like our schools are. I'm telling you, something that I want uh, folks to start looking at is AI, uh, because I'm telling you, this AI thing is going to make trillionaires and we're going to be sitting over here watching everybody else's boat rise up and we're going to be sitting here and say, I don't like it. Well, guess what? Just because you don't like it don't mean it ain't going to happen. So I would rather be at the table saying, you know, that algorithm right there is a disparate against my community as opposed to sitting outside hollering through the damn the, the, the doggone door talking about AI is discriminatory. Man, I'm, I'm gonna be. At, I'm trying to be at the table, and I think that that's a lot of, lot of, lot of our, a lot of our generational stuff could be solved if we get the right people at the table. Because some, some of these folks we got at the table, Ooh. But, we, but AI is, is is something that I, I think uh, is is something that, that uh, we need to have a conversation about with our children, with our adults, and with our elderly too. Well, I have to say, like for myself, being around our children every day, that when in the schools where, you know, the students predominantly look like us, I find that nine times out of 10, they have never heard of chat GPT or they don't know, know what AI is mm -hmm. versus in, you know, the schools where the students don't look like us. They're mm -hmm. using it. They're into mm -hmm. it. And I was like, why is it that we always like the last to know stuff? And then like even some of the teachers, they were like, you can do what now? And show me. I was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. wow. You know, why is that? Why are we the last to know this? And I don't get it for young people, especially since, you know, they're always on social media. But now as I'm even talking out loud, like a lot of times they're on social media, social media with foolishness. Mm -hmm. Instead of things that can help, like Miss Kim said, you know, we have to lose the consumer mentality and take on a producer mentality. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. we're consumers, um, or some of us are, then perhaps that's why we are not 
privy or open to the AI because AI is not um, uh, real housewives or anything like that. It's not something that we um, can entertain ourselves with, so to speak. Right. But I agree I with um, Don wholeheartedly. Like I tell people all the time, AI is like another employee. It has you hear so many people, and even people in the church saying it's the devil. I'm not dealing with that. Well, these are the same people who was probably like, you know, against the internet and all of that. You know, mm -hmm. you can be against it all day, but it's not going anywhere. We elevating, we elevating. It's gonna continue to grow. So you just gonna stay back here while everybody else over here? That's crazy. So who does the responsibility um, of uh, not knowing about chat GDP? GPT and AI, who does that fall on? Is that the educational system or does that fall on the household? I think, uh, I, I definitely don't think you can put it on the educational system. In my opinion, you know, the educational system is an entity they're doing what it's doing and that's a whole nother conversation. But, you know, um, you think about how it's set up, like the schools who are performing um, who are underperforming, that's how the school system make money. So why would they want you to be your best, highest self um, and know all these things if they can, you know, get funding off of that? So I, I, I really don't think um, it's that. But then in everything we do, you know, you become, so let's say like when we decide to go to school and we get a higher degree or something, a person that is a higher consciousness than us, is, uh, than us is the one that's teaching. So I'm not knocking teachers by any means, but again, you're being taught by how they say the Norton flows from the head down. Whatever that teacher knows, that's what that teacher is teaching the students. Well, me, I'm into technology. I don't know it all, but the little bit I do know, I am teaching these children how to use it. We are using AI in the classroom. We are um, using the different apps um, concerning AI so they can draw their own pictures, so they can write their own books, so they can create their own materials. Teach them in the, in the way that they are able to learn because the young people, they kind of into that already. But mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're not, if you don't know about it, how can you teach someone else? Well, I'm telling you. I think that um, what you're saying is um, on point. I want to add another piece that um, actually John brought up about exploring earlier. Um, and Twyla, you and I have talked about um, the exploration of our culture or people in our community. Some have not left the city that they live in all of their life. And so mm -hmm. AI is another um, way of looking at our lack of ability to explore because it's everywhere where um, children, well, let's just say parents would be able to, but because it's the devil, then it will never uh, be brought into um, the focus of children that actually need technology.